Lois, Mike with Tradewinds RV Center here to congratulate you on your XLR Microboost 29 LRLE travel trailer. I'm here to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite and a few things to take into consideration when you're parking. On your campsite, I want you to leave plenty of room for this big old awning. On our off campsite, beside your slide, I also want you to think about where your power and water connections are going to be. Your power is going to plug in back here by your tires. Right behind your tires, on your driver's side of your tow vehicle. Or off camp side, they call it. And then your water connection is going to be up front on the same side. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once you arrive and unhook a hitch, first thing we do is level our unit. The unit comes with a power tongue jack. Night right, docking light should you arrive at night. Simply raise or lower this until you're level. Now, should you lose power under this rubber stopper right here, you've got a small hand crank that will get down in there, you find the bolt and get this up and down should, you know, for some reason, battery be dead or you lose power somehow. Speaking of power, check those battery posts every now and then. Make sure nothing's wiggled loose over time. Once we've got our unit level, next thing we do is stabilize it. Unit comes with three quarter inch stabilizing jacks. You can use an impact driver or a drill gun. I am gonna recommend stabilizing jack pads for the ground. All uh, those pads are gonna protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt, debris, hot black top in the summer. Uh, just gonna protect those and make them last longer. Uh, use an impact driver, run it down just until it's taut. Remember, our units are already level. All we're trying to do at this point is stabilize it. Let's go around and get all four of those down, two on the front, two on the back. Back, back corners there. Once we got our unit level and stable, we can hook up our power and water. All right, so we got a 30 foot long, 30 amp hose, plugs here in the side. It'll go in at like 10 o'clock, turn to the right, and then lock it down with the black washer. Should you lose power, or excuse me, uh, should you need to plug into a 110, there's a 30 to 15 amp reducer that'll come in your convenience pack as well. Got our power hooked up, let's hook up our water. All right, at campsites, we are gonna hook up to your city water connection. First and foremost, your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is gonna reduce the water pressure 40 to 50 PSI, protect the lines in your unit. Always use this because you don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites. Hook that up, hook up your hose, but don't turn your hose on yet. Let's find your hot water heater. I believe yours is over on the campsite. There it is. Come inside here. Oh, that door come right off. Make sure that this is set to minimum or max, however high you hot you want it. And then make sure that that's turned on. And you go ahead and turn that hose on. Now that hose has been on for a few minutes, once you go inside, check, check the, uh, your slide, get your slide open. Get that slide open so you can get to uh, all of your water lines. Get it in and open up all of your water lines. Get a nice steady flow of water going through them. No air. Then shut them lines off. And then you're all set to camp. Now let's say we're going to go camping and we're not going to use city water. We're going to go dry camping. Oh, boondocking as they call it. In that case, we're going to fill up our fresh water tank. No need for a water pressure regulator here. Uh, you can use them, but normally you can gravity fill these for the hose. Uh, once your lines are filled while you're filling this. Dang it. Now let's say we're going to go camping and we're not going to use city water. We're going to go dry camping or boondocking. In that case, we're going to fill up our fresh water tank. Same way, water pressure regulator, and hook up the hose. Now what I want you to do now is go inside where you check the levels of your black and gray tanks, check the level of your fresh water tank. Once that's full, go ahead and re remove that hose, put that cap back on, and then whatever you want to utilize that water, you'll turn on your water pump. Don't turn on your water pump and using city water, that is already pressurized. All right, that covers everything out here. Let's go ahead and walk around the rest of the unit, continuing here on our off-camp side. Big pass-through storage area here. 
access to your water lines there slide that is a vent for your microwave on your slides they've got a fluid that you can spray on these on your wipers or seals um it keeps them flexible keeps them from dry rotting get some of that that was a sewer, sewer waste and galley tanks them are all down there what was your fresh water drain which is right there behind your tires easier to get to here again your power around the back here i'll go inside and show you how to bring this down set your deck up you prep for a backup camera got a leash link around this corner here put the pet on that separate door for your garage entryway that's a vent you can push out from indoors that'll help vent out exhaust fumes that are inside a couple of outdoor speakers again your hot water heater this is the fluid for your furnace a couple things on that one make sure it's never blocked and two if you're running your furnace steer clear of that it does get hot mount for a tv just snap right down in there now right, here's your tv cable and 110s outdoor shower hot and cold water black tank plus we'll talk about that when leaving the campsite and dumping the black tanks had a fresh water drain on the other side this side has our low point drains yeah right there one thing on your awning your door cannot be opened up all the way i'll show you that when we open it uh, you need it at about a 90 degree angle side over here get your big pass through storage the quick connect lp here and your spare tire again up front your propane is on a regulator just finishing hooking that up right now uh, this regulator pointed toward the tank you wish to be using or put it in the middle for an automatic crossover when it's green it means you've got gas lastly up front behind our battery is our battery disconnect that would disconnect all the battery power to the unit that will come important later when i talk about your carbon dioxide and propane detector that about covers everything out here let's go take a look on the inside these steps couple things uh, we can't do it right now with our awning out your you cannot open up your step your door all the way like you need to to get your steps down or up otherwise this will catch on it coming up inside the unit first thing i was like to point out your fire extinguisher make sure that you and everyone is camping with you knows the fire extinguisher is located by the entry doorway in case of an emergency right to our left is a fireplace not just for looks anymore i can go through and show you all the pretty colors but the biggest thing now folks is the heat it's chilly in the morning or evening crank this baby up on high it's already kicking out it'll get it toasty in here in no time save your gas use their electricity to warm it up in here well, there you for your shoes down there our control panel living room lights a water pump that's where you turn on your water when pump when utilizing your fresh water your awning light it's on your arms slide in and out awning in and out battery fresh that's when i said to hold down when filling your fresh water tank black and gray tanks on your awning you only want to extend that until you can see your brown bar and your flap is down to 90 degrees if you hold this button down on extend it will continue to run itself out and start to run itself up backwards so keep an eye on it when you run it out make sure you don't run it out further than you need to I'll prep for a TV here. There's the backer for it. Cable and 110 here. That little green light on the right. There's a button by it. That is a digital channel enhancer. Make sure that when you arrive at the campsites, that you turn that on while uh, running your digital channel scan, and that will help you to pick up all the local channels. Right here is going to be our thermostat. Get this AC to crank up. Go right on through to oops back to cool cool i keep going past it cool low that'll work so our ac is here it does have a quick dump a little secret here when you get it to campsite put this on ac high 
or cool high and you know, hear a blast here in a minute and leave these open that'll allow cool air to get cooled it'll get cool a lot faster close these up and it'll blast cold air all through the unit now you notice also when I go around to off that it takes a second and it'll shut off now I'm gonna try and heat don't want to it's 80 in here but heat's on you hear that kick on what you'll notice there it goes now you'll notice when I shut it off it'll take a few minutes for the fan to cycle through before it shuts off on the furnace I uh, did miss your sound system down here crank that up AM, FM, Bluetooth, see if we can pick up any stations here in this metal building. Usually not, but there you go, indoors. Shut that off. Now just outdoors. Um, shut them off as well. So tool zones, or have both on. AM, FM, Bluetooth, TV. here's your sources, nice sound system. You know, kitchen, you got a 110 with GFCI reset back there. Make sure there's nothing in there before I start that up for you a second. Your standard microwave. Uh, you do got some plumbing underneath here to maintain. Just keep an eye on it, make sure that uh, nothing's wiggled loose over time. You got a light. And a fan above your cooktop. Fold that back, makes an excellent backsplash. Turn on your panel light, turn that to light, hit your spark when your gas is hooked up, which you should get ready to do now. This will light it. All three of these light like that. Same thing with your oven. Open this up, turn that to, to light, get your spark here, that will light your pilot light, and then you just turn it to the desired temperature you wish to bake at. Take that panel light down and it becomes an oven light. Make sure your glass is down for travel. Our fear on fridge, all the controls are inside on that. Right there, not much to that. Turn the corner. Underneath our big pantry area here is our breaker boxes and fuses. A ton of 15s in there, a couple 30s. Highly recommend having some of those with you when you go camping. To the right of that is your 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector. Now the reason I mention that's 12 volt, always running off your battery. So if you are out dry camping, boondocking somewhere, nothing plugged in charging your battery, use that battery disconnect if you're going to be gone for the whole day to keep this burning your battery down. Step into our bathroom real quick. Since you do have a hand crank open power exhaust vent here. 110 with GFCI reset. More plumbing to maintain. There's an access panel. And here's where you turn on your hot water heater. Turn that on, set it at whatever de degree you wish to set it at. Make sure your water lines are full when you're using that. Light in here. Which will bring us back to our garage. I've got everything kind of set up right now, so like as if we were utilizing it for a garage to haul our toys in. Let me walk you around it. You've got a backer in the wall here for a TV. Another access panel to plumbing. 110. Here's one of the vents I said you can press out. It'll air out any gas fumes you have in here. You have your own fire extinguisher back here. Right now I have our seating on the walls. We'll bring that down in one second. Go Power GP electric solar controller. Whole purpose of this is to keep your solar panels from overcharging your batteries. All you need to do is make sure you're always on your wet battery. I'm going to send you a video from GP electric on this. That'll help explain that if you have any other questions on it. A couple of charging ports here. Indoor and outdoor lighting. Got our mattresses here. Let me show you where to set them at. 
So, just get a strap that holds your bed up. Bring your leg out. Same thing on the other end. Set this down. Put a flat cushion on the bottom. A bent cushion on the back. And just that quickly, you got a seating area. Now this bunks here. Use a two-handed job, so I'm gonna have someone videotape me bringing this down. All right, so what you do is you grab it at the back, pull it down on the back. That's gonna release your front. Then step forward and pull your front down. Same thing, put it in the back. Just lift up on your front. Now this time you can kind of lift as you're pushing. And that will set everything back up. Just that quickly ass back up. And it about covers everything in here. Or set your deck up. Alright, exit in the garage now. Come around back. I'm gonna open up your open up your deck here. Hey, you both have locks on these. Unlock this, lift this up, lift this up, and hold it over to the side. Bring your sister so this comes down real easy. Now to bring this down for a ramp, simply move this cotter and let this down as a ramp. Use as your deck. Make sure that the cable is into the cotter, not into this. And we're gonna come up here on Velcro on the right hand side and pull this. It's a section of two all the way out. Same thing over here on the other side. Grab this whole section, bring it out. On Velcro in two different spots. You got a big one here. It's going to allow your front to fold out. So down here, oh, these will, your legs of these will snap right in there. So I had to give me an angle to get that in there. This will pull forward. Now this side has a piece that bends. You see this section in the middle that's bendy? If you want to bend that in. Bring your corner over here, and then when you open this up, pull out on that, and that'll lock that in there. Up front, snap that in. If you ever get with this not snapping in, that means your wheel has gotten a little high. Up top, slide this over, and quicker with two hands, just that quickly you have a deck. Reverse the process, putting everything back. So we step on that, now release these. Same thing here. Make sure you push the side back first. Unleash that corner. Fold this over. Your blue, big, bigger piece went in first. So left side in first. We'll strap that back in here. Bring the other side back over. Don't go back on. And you're done on your deck. Alright, one last thing here in the living room. We're going to jackknife down a sofa here. Down. We're gonna bring our Murphy bed down. As you're coming down, open up your legs.
bring your cushion forward and fold the top back. A couple USB ports up there. Reverse the process to put it back. Fold that forward. Push this back a little bit. Lift up your bed. Tucking away our legs. Locking back in. Jack knife this back up. And we're back to a living room. I just shut itself off. All right, I'll close the unit up. I just come to my control panel and shut off my main lights. Then I can see any accident lighting I need to shut off. Make sure my bathroom's off. Make sure my vent is closed. And then I say doors and drawers. Just walk through the unit. Make sure all your doors and drawers are closed. Nothing's going to impede your slide from coming in. One over here. And hit slide in. Down so you see everything that's going on as it's coming in. All right, slides in. Shut off our lights. Exit the unit. And as I said, a couple things on your door. One, it can't be all the way open and open up your awning. And it can't be, you can't bring any steps up without it also being all the way open. You have adjustable feet. Simply press up on this and that'll bring your feet up and down. How close that comes that's why your door needs to be all the way open lock that in there before you leave the dump station i say that in case we're going to go in here and check our levels of our tanks as we're dumping lock and deadbolt your door lift and turn your handle that's how you want your door for travel all right if we're out dry camping we're going to bring up our stabilizer jacks Come up here between our tires, reach up in there, and dump our low point, our uh, fresh water tank. And for the campsite, we're going to unhook our power, our water, our cable, hook up, bring up our stabilizing jacks, hook up our hitch, and head on up to the dump station. Now, the dump station park accordingly. The dump's about middle between your tires and the front on your off camp side or your driver's side. You got a 10 foot hose comes to your convenience pack. Arrive, hook that up, and pull that black handle. It's gonna be your fatter handle always, no matter what color it turns, it's the black handle. Once that sounds like it's no longer draining, go inside, check the levels of your black tanks. If it's showing empty, or almost empty, go ahead and leave that black handle open. Grab the hose at the dump station, come over here to your campsite. And hook that up and let that run for a good five minutes that's going to wash all that nastiness out of your black tank when that's done remove that hose close this black tank make sure all that washout that you put in there has drained when that's completely empty close your black and pull your gray that's going to be cleaner wires your sinks and your showers I sent clean your sewage hose out for you. Usually while my grays are dumping, not to purposely run you back and forth, but your stuff is on opposite sides of the unit. But while my grays are dumping, go ahead, go to your low point drains, open up those. Make sure you close them before you take off. When your gray tanks are done draining, Go ahead and close that ha handle up. Take your sewage hose, store it in a sanitary and convenient place, and head on home. Again, we thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this boost for many years to come. Happy camping!